My name is Erica Greenberg Schneider. I'm a visiting instructor of art at University of South Florida in St. Petersburg for the graphic design program. And here we are in our print shop. Um, I've been a master printer for 35 years. In 2011, I was knighted by the French government for the work I do promoting French culture and publishing French artists. And today what I would like to do is go through some of the technical things that Salvador Dali used to make his prints to make it a little bit easier for you to understand what you're seeing. First I would like to start speaking about is the process called lithography. Lithography was invented in the late 19th century and it's a planographic process, meaning that it's flat. Now, there's a few processes in lithography that make it the closest to drawing um, possible. Uh, first are the dry processes, which is the lithographic pencil. This is American-made, William Corns. And then the lithographic pastels, which are French-made, Charbonnel. These are Bavarian limestones. It's a very specific kind of stone. And this kind of stone is the only stone that has the possibility to make lithographs with. Now, if you look at this, it's backwards. And most printing processes are like that because you draw one way, the paper goes on, and then when it's printed, it's the mirror image. When the artist draws, the grease of the drawing tools bond onto the stone and with the stone. Just like on this paper that has a grain on it, the grain of the stone shows through the mark. You print with a roller when you're doing lithography. So what happens is, when the, when the stone is on the press, water is put on the stone, and the water travels in all those areas that are hydrophilic, or non-image areas. And it makes a kind of a holding area of humidity. So when I pass my ink, where there's water, the water's going to say, hey, I'm good, thank you very much. And where there's the drawing, it's going to say to the water, no thanks, buddy, I'm good. I'm waiting for my nourishing ink to come by and ink up the mark of the drawing. And that's basic lithography. It's like in the kitchen when you're cooking, if you poured olive oil into a glass of water, it would stay suspended at the top. Same thing, water and oil don't mix. This is one of the first lithographs I printed about 30 years ago as a professional. Um, and this is completely done with this instrument. And this is done with what's called lithographic touche, which is a kind of ink. And it's like using India ink or watercolor. If you look at lithographs on the back, there should be no plate mark. It's a planographic technique. Now we're going to talk about engraving and etching, which fall under uh, the word of intaglio. Let's take a look at some of the tools. This is a burin. This is a graver. This is a twisted graver, so it has two different sizes of points on it. This is a stylus, which usually has a tungsten tip, which is much better to, to, to draw directly in. And these are the old-fashioned French needles, which I happen to love, and I have a whole set of them. Here we have a copper plate. One side has nothing on it. The other side has what's called a hard ground. It's not going anywhere. This is for etching. This is for engraving. Engraving and dry point are direct attacks on the copper. The artist draws directly on the copper. Etching, we need a ground, and we, and we take the ground off our marks take the ground off so an acid bath can come and bite. It makes two totally different worlds of marks. So let's talk about that. A dry point, there's, when an artist draws on copper, it's not like drawing um, on a piece of paper. There's a lot of tension in the metal. Your point has to be very sharp. 
You're pushing into the metal, so where does the copper go? Good question. The copper comes up and sits, and that's called a burr, which is what you see right here. See those rich blacks and that, those fuzzy lines? You can tell right away that that's a dry point line, this very velvety quality. But you can afterwards, if you so desire, and a lot of artists do this, and even Dolly's d did this, is the printer can sand off the burr if you don't like the burr in certain places, so it's workable. And engraving, you, you have to push the metal. So I'm going to stop there so you can see. You're pushing it out, and it ends up being what they call a coup de cochon, a pig's tail at the end, that you then nick right off. And then the traditional tools that you see in some of Dali's work are called roulette. The roulette, the roulette gives you this. So you can get half tones, but it's a, like a screen. It's a dot pattern or a line pattern. And then they came out with this, which is a, um, a haphazard pattern. So it's not a measured screen or dot. So these are applied directly to the copper. This is an artist that I worked with in Paris many years ago, Patrick Aubert, but who just did dry points. That's a dry point. Those values shift and how um, the burr really adds to the quality of, of those lines. The dry point leaves a burr that inks in this kind of fuzzy black. While etching with an acid bath is a very crisp line. There's no burr. And so how do we do that? Well, this is the part of the plate that has a hard ground on it. And so the whole idea for the artist is to draw and take that ground off. You can use all different kinds of tools All marks. The more traditional, of course, is the line and the cross hatching, which Dolly did a lot of. This is then put in an acid bath. And this is acid resist, the ground. So the acid only goes where the artist's mark is. And it's up to the, the etcher or the master printer working with that artist to know what he or she wants in terms of value. So the object is, the longer it's in the acid, the deeper it bites, the more ink it will hold, the darker the mark. There's one last technique in etching that I think is very important that we try to understand in looking at uh, Dolly's prints, and that's called aquatint. If you remember correctly, line etching, where we draw through the ground and then the plate is etched, you can have a system of values that are linear. What happens if you want more of a tone? Like this. Well, that's called an aquatint. All right, what is an aquatint? Well, if you think about spray paint, if you were to step a foot away from a white wall and you start to spray very equally, you have a system of dots. Well, that's what we do with aquatint. Aquatint is a rosin that is, we shake very equally on the plate that lands as a series of dots on the plate. The plate is then heated and the dots adhere to the copper. And just like the hard ground, the aquatint or the rosin is an acid resist. So the acid bites around all those dots. So then we're back to the same logic as etching, because it is etching. So here you have a, a series of actions. That's like a four minutes, eight minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes, pretty much. All right. Now what's interesting in this is we can start talking about color in so as if I was to take a red, let's take a red, that was one of Dolly's favorite colors, let's take a red, and I was to print this, this would look pink, and that would be the opaque red. So that's how I give value and tone to an image. All right, this is a line etching by an artist that lives in uh, Bradenton named Claudia Ryan, and I chose this today as an example because the image is very surreal, so I thought it would have an interesting effect um, being that this is the Dali. The lines are inside. They've been engraved or drawn into the copper. We use a wet paper that we soak for a while. And then 
we're on a printing press. This is an etching press, it's a Charles Brandt. These are called blankets, they're wool blankets that push that damp paper into the engraved parts of the image. Now what's interesting here is you can see there's lighter and darker places, okay? So this etching was done in three times. We grounded the plate, she drew the first layer. Then I regrounded the plate, she drew a second layer. And then I regrounded the plate and she drew a third layer and I left it in for a longer time. So these are two hour bites, this is about an hour. The professional print shop is a place, it's a battlefield and a truce at the same time. You know, it's where people, where artists wrestle with these images and then finally come to terms with their image and through new knowledge and new process are able to push that image just a little bit farther and into the domain of printmaking. <laughs>